Once again, let's give it up. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay, so we have five brilliantly talented individuals on this porch, if you will. And I want to ask them questions and nope, y'all didn't get to pre-look at questions or know what I'm gonna ask you, ha ha. Yup, y'all always gotta be ready. It is what it is. There's a couple of things that I want. Yes. Yes, come move in. Where's Alanda? Can you can you let her wipe this off me? I'm gonna have to come. I'm gonna Please. step right back. I don't care. Just I, like right I know, right? We gotta use it though. We have to use it. But, uh, Thank you. You can come as close as you like. Yeah, come to the porch. I have somebody to wipe off this lipstick that probably makes me look like a clown right now. Your lipstick is fine. No, you're saying that to be nice to no, me. No, I'm not. I mean, if it's not fine, I can't say it. <laughs> All right, the other thing that I would like to do is if somebody can hit the lights so we can get full lights in the space, the, the switch is right there at the end of that wall. Great, that's perfect. All right, so really quick, really quick, before we get into this artist talk, I wanted to talk, point some individuals out, some entities out, the major support that was provided by the Cameron and Jane Baird Foundation. Thank you. Community Foundation, thank you. Creatives Rebuild New York, thank you. Erie County Cultural Funding, thank you. m and Bank, thank you. National Endowment for the Arts, thank you. John R. O'Shai Foundation, thank you. And New York State Council on the Arts. Ralph Wilson Foundation, Western New York Foundation. Listen, all these entities must have come together with their boards, because I know I sit on a couple of boards, and they made a decision. They said, we want to impact community, and we're going to put money and dollars to the community, and we're going to give it so that they can grow and build. I was affected by that when I was a young person, and look at this now. We get to be affected by it still, and oh my God, I get to pass that on to all of the people that are here today. All right, we're going to go down the line, and you're going to introduce yourselves to all of these fantastic people. We're gonna start with you, Caitlin. We keep starting with me, that's okay. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Caitlin Lowe, also known as the Galactic Grill. Uh, what else are we supposed to be doing? Introducing ourselves and what else? Who am I? Uh, man, I'm just a kid from Brooklyn who happened to make it up here for school and kinda of got stuck. And <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Yo, yes! I'm Isaac, um, also known as Isaac. Um, uh, what else? I'm a human, um, and I like art, and that's about it. Yo. Hey, my name is Micus Washington. I'm a young creative um, of Buffalo, New York. I go to Chictawaga. Middle school? No, yeah, middle, middle school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's 12. I'm the baby here, so that's that's crazy I'm doing this at 12 years old. It's real nice. <laughs> As I can tell, I got, a, I got a lot of good connections with these people. These are all good people, people that are really creative, that are able to connect with in a different way, on a different level. And this is opening up such a big opportunity for me because my school is a little, ooh, can't speak. It's okay. My school is allowing me to present my work in the auditorium, so that would be big. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness, I keep hitting it, don't I? Everybody be careful of this. Hello, how's it going? Hey. I'm Stephen Foreman Jr., also known as Paulie. Um, I don't know how I'm going uh, to pass up Micus, but um, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a black artist, and yeah, that's, that's about it, you know. Just here to, you know, 
just indulge in all this. Like, it's, it's awesome to see everybody here for this gallery show. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of y'all for coming through. Just to look at our pieces, to be here, to listen to Itina perform, to listen to us talk about our work. Um, yeah, thank y'all so much for uh, being out here. That's the song. I'm Tallulah Gordon. Um, <laughs> thank you. I um, born and raised in Buffalo, New York. Went to performing arts. Um, moved to Brooklyn for a couple years and came back because Buffalo is better, and that's my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Caitlin. I know we. <laughs> Hearing opinions on that. Um, um, yeah, most of my work focuses on just human experience, Jewish experience, queer experience, and I'm very excited to be yeah. here. Yeah. Give it up, give it up. So, to give a little background, Tales from the Porch started in 2019, and it was out of curiosity. I got tired of everybody saying certain things about the East Side, like, oh, it's, it's very violent, it's this, it's that, it's a lot of this coming out of that, it's this, blah, blah, blah. And um, all, that's, a lot of that is true. But I wasn't hearing the fact that there's gems that come out of the East Side. And then, you know, you would hear about other spaces. You know, this, I'm just gonna be, oh, I can't do nothing but be real. They talked about how the South Side is racist and how the West Side is this or just these different things, right? And so I chose to go around and to ask questions of people on their porch and I got a whole bunch of no's and a whole bunch of screw faces. Um, but I got some yeses and those yeses were impactful and I was able to capture these stories and to share them at Buffalo State in 2019. And then in 2022, I was compelled mainly because of um, just the pandemic that was happening and I wanted to capture stories of black, um, everybody calls them minority owned businesses, I don't like calling them that, but individuals who own businesses that have the same complexion as me, right? And they were pushing and persevering through the pandemic to do whatever they needed to do. But then tragedy happened within Buffalo. And one of the things that my pastor, Pastor Stephen Foreman Sr. from Christ Crusaders Assembly, one of the things that he said was, you wanna overcome evil with good. And it's biblical principle and I follow that. And I said, you know what? What can I do with my talents, gifts and skills in order to showcase all of the good that I can in order to overcome the evil that occurred? And so we gathered all of the creatives, any, any creatives that I could, young people, and we went out into the streets and captured photos, went to June team capture photos and focused on seven leaders within our community who have been doing great work they're still doing great work and they will keep doing great work and I want to showcase them on the east side in collaboration with the church that I go to and we were able to give away like over 300 book bags or something like that and to, to serve the community as best as we could we did. it was dope my thing is always giving back like what's the next thing and so I wanted to encourage the next generation to tell stories of their porch. And that's why we're here today. Because then I said, how do you see the porch? How do you see the porch? And all of these individuals were able to utilize their artistic forms to showcase porch. And I met them from different capacities, different reasons, what have you. We'll be here forever if I talked about it. But all in essence, we shared porches. And that's what I want to come to. What does the porch mean to you? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so we kind of all similarly have an idea that it's both private and public, or not quite private, not quite public. Um, but it's also like a place where lots of experiences happen. I feel like a lot of knowledge for some reason. To me, it feels like, okay, maybe that's where you're hanging out with your friends or family, or you're just exchanging stories there. I don't know, maybe you're going out on the porch for a cigarette break. You're exchanging some kind of stories, usually. Um, and I kind of wanted to treat this piece as my porch, um, and like this is my way of telling you a story. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, similar to what Tallulah was saying, 
Um, I view the porch as like a platform in which, you know, you get to share whatever you got going on inside, whether that be like within your heart, mind, whatever. Um, and similarly, yeah, just sharing a story, experience, whatever, like, you know, just being open to at least like put whatever you're thinking out into the world, like whether that's sharing that with someone else or just like, I don't know, blurting it out, you know? Um, just being able to do that, like through that platform, I think that's what the porch means to me. Um, and similarly, I used, uh, you know, canvas, like a canvas and uh, paint to use as my uh, porch, you know? So I just wanted to convey uh, some stories, some ideas, mostly frustrations through my piece. We'll get into that later, I'm sure, in the panel discussion. But um, yeah, my porch is basically my paintings, my art form, whatever else. Uh, storytelling, really. So, yeah, that's that's my porch. Man, it means a lot. The word porch and where I grew up, family for sure. Like stuff like this, being around people and having a conversation. I love having conversations. I love talking. People that know me closely know I talk a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. um, but I had to learn in a sense where that's a good thing. I like, I had like I'm good at starting that conversations. But the porch to me is straight up family, being around people at all times. And rather not just be family, it can be somebody out of the street or walking down the street. Um, the pictures I had took were people that I had met walking down the street and not getting to know that person bothers me so I can take it I can simply take the picture and walk away I sat there for about 30 minutes talking to one girl and now we ended up um connecting together now she does photography because I had lent her a camera for a day and now she's into it so that shows me that I'm doing something good and spreading my my passion to other people. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, the porch, I mean, the porch in its literal sense is uh, like a place that you could go to that's outside of your house, but still within your, your property that you can be outside yet inside. It's, it's like a, it's, it's a weird space. Um, like it's like the in between, but I feel like a porch could be like it could have like a deeper meaning, which is like your place to create or express yourself. You know what I'm saying? So like you got a you got a front porch, you got a back porch, you got a upstairs porch, you got different types of place, like different places you could be, and it like it, it varies in levels of uh, privacy. You know, because if you're on your front porch, you're displaying yourself to the world. A lot of people's top porches are enclosed, so your private your back porch is the most private porch you have. So it's like different levels of privacy and different levels you can express yourself to the world. So for about half of my life, I did not have a porch. Like I grew up in New York City public housing, literally bars on my windows. And that's why I put that in that poem. Like we did not have porches. This was kind of like a, it was like a dream. My mom, if you've ever seen Crooklyn, that's like how my mom grew up. So like we would drive by where she used to live and she'd tell me stories about how they would be sitting on the, it's called the stoop in, in the city at least. Like, because like it's literally just a couple of steps. Ain't no room for no porch, but <laughs> that's besides the point. So for, for me, the porch was a, a snapshot into somebody else's life. Because even when my family moved into a house and we did have a porch, I felt like I didn't belong there. Like literally there would be people who were in the neighborhood longer than us who would just come by and just sit on the porch because that's what they were used to doing. My father's friends, my brother's friends, never my friends. So it always felt like a, a outside looking in kind of a situation. And that's kind of what I, I tried to like pull in with my, with my piece. Like it, to me, my porch is how I interact with my community. And again, growing up in a not so safe neighborhood, my mother would not let me interact with my community. 
So <laughs> this is this is that interaction. My my porch is the artist that I that I meet, that I speak to, that whenever just literally the things that I say, it sounds like word vomit to some people, but they're like, yup, mm -hmm, I know exactly what you mean. So that's what my porch is. That's what my my community is, my stoop, so to speak. Nice. Beautiful. I want to make sure I'm the time. Nice, nice. I do want to put a little plug in. On May 21st, we will be coming together again, and there will be a full panel discussion with the emerging artist at Birchville Penny. And we will dig into some, I know, <laughs> we will dig in even deeper because we, we don't have all of the time at the moment. So just letting you know that, make sure you follow um, Buffalo Art Studio, make sure you follow Get Focus Productions so that you can get that information when it comes. One of the things that I wanna make sure we do is get into the mediums and also get into like mediums for sure. And then I wanna talk about successes and failures. I told y'all. We're going to go there. Successes and failures. So what are your mediums for this particular work? Micus. Mediums, <laughs> medium cup. What did you use to capture? So for my project, I have... <laughs> <laughs> He's so nervous. <laughs> so, right. man. You got this. You got this. This is probably the biggest crowd I've ever been in front of. Um, <laughs> So for my project, I had used a Polaroid camera. So for that, I, the only my grandfather, he had passed away. I didn't know much about him. I'm, I'm upset that I didn't get to ask some questions or no further meanings behind it. So the only picture I had of him was a Polaroid picture. And I had thought to myself, why have it any different? I'm just gonna use Polaroid, a Polaroid camera to capture my pictures. Oh, yeah. Um, during my project, I was able to go around Buffalo or my neighborhood, really different places um, to capture pictures. And some of them, they're not all people. They can be places, things. So on this side over, I don't know if y'all can see, but whenever y'all come over here, there's a picture of a tree that looked like E.T. I like that, I like that one a lot, man. I didn't know much about E.T., so I had my mom had told me to watch a little snippet of it. And in that snippet, I had, I had seen that he was really curious, so I wrote down curiosity. It's kind of like a scrapbook. It's not supposed to be clean. It's not supposed to be uh, neat. As you can see, there are lines overlapping pictures. There are some lines that cut in between pictures. You see ripped pieces of paper on it. And those paper are statements, so... <laughs> Got you. <laughs> um, my grandfather, me and me and so there are red strings connected to it. Me and my grandfather were connected by because that's my uh, grandfather, of course. He's connected to Isaac, and Isaac. Uh, he used to call Isaac Ice Baby because he used to eat ice out of the ice dispenser. I didn't know that until Isaac brought it up, so I was like, I'm gonna write that. Why not? Um, but. Yeah, that was the main focus of my project, Polaroid, and I had a lot of fun experience doing it, and I would keep doing it. I'll say one thing I would like to do more, like go around, travel more. I would like to go to different places. Um, anywhere close, close by. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. We're gonna go to Caitlin. So my medium, we good? Yep. Okay. So my medium uh, Z are photography. I use a digital camera to capture these beautiful folks that you see here. Um, it will not live in the space, but I will be putting that poem on some sort of social media page. Uh, and also there will be some videos accompanying that in the next few days that will be kind of just like some, some questions that they 
answer, just a, a quick little get to know them kind of a situation. Oh my gosh, I just realized I wasn't paying attention to y'all. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, I got my back turned, my bad. Uh, so did you want me to talk about the failures? Or is that a weight thing? Medium. The, the medium? All right, so we good, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Um, just for the sake of time, like I said, there is an opportunity to be able to learn more about uh, a lot of the questions that I'm asking. So for the sake of time, I do want to hop into, we can start with the failures. I know that word is so, it's triggering. Even saying it, it's like, ah. But it's, it's life. And so I want to talk about um, some of those, and then I want to talk about the successes, how we overcome um, some challenges. So um, Tallulah, do you have any, uh, you feel like you faced any failures or, yeah, let's, I'll pass it to you. Um, so there's a few things. There was, originally I was gonna work um, on the piece with someone else, um, and that ended up not working out, um, and kind of completely changed the direction of my piece. Originally I was gonna do portraits of other people, and telling someone else's story, and it kind of, I was encouraged to tell the story how I want to tell it and tell my own version of the story and within that I kind of decided to do like a mixture of self-portraits and portraits of other people um, but there was a lot of I mean even there's uh, the Frankenstein picture of my dad who's actually here right now <laughs> um, I, I had like completely shot that role and originally I was posing as Frankenstein and that didn't come out right at all or just um, like I, I tried to do the robot print like three times and two times it came out overexposed and I only had so much fabric so I ended up having to improvise and use test strips to finish the piece. But I actually really like how it came out with using test strips and the different you know, looks of the robot, um, different levels of exposure because it kind of adds to the Frankenstein golem feel of it. Yeah. So lots of failures but I'm actually like, Wait, that was a cute failure though. <laughs> so I don't yeah, mind like it. it. And, and it's like sometimes things don't turn out the way we expect it, like based off of the goal or the plan that we prepare for ourselves. And sometimes you gotta pivot. Like in a song, watch me pivot, release the limits, I'm off that. So just trying to like, all right, what, what did I plan for myself? Ah, that didn't go right. All right, what do I do? The biggest thing, the dopest thing is the success is that you didn't stop. You kept going. We had so many conversations. <laughs> I'm like, Talula, you can do it. You got this. You did that. You did that, you know? And it was tough, but you you overcame and you made it happen. And that's what's dope about it. What about you? Yeah. <laughs> um, so originally, right, this was uh, my, I guess, part of the, you know, exhibition was, was to have like three pieces up or at least three paintings up, right? Um, a lot of y'all might might not have like been able to hear me talk about the pieces, but they're mostly like problems that I see affecting the black community, and I wanted to have a third piece like offering up a solution for that kind of thing, which I see as like a more greener uh, future for for black people. The two pieces that I have hanging up uh, talk about how like you know there's a lot of greed and uh, money problems that affect the black community, making it more desolate, making it more like almost inhabitable for uh, black bodies. So um, I wanted to offer up a, a solution for that, which I, I feel is, like I said, a greener, like, you know, more trees in our black, or in our uh, communities, more just like wealth, if you will, like generational wealth in our communities. So, um, but I didn't get enough time to, you know, work around it. So um, I'm, I'm happy with, with what I have up now, but um, yeah, the original plan was to have three pieces up. I do have a you know a little sketchbook that I'm super proud that I got up because I, I yeah thank you appreciate it. Um, I'm glad that I have that up because it shows the process in which like you don't see a lot of like artists putting up in their uh, art stu or their uh, exhibits rather sorry. Um, so I ju I just thought it'd be an interesting little thing you know hopefully I can see more artists doing that in the future with their own exhibits. Um, Oh, what happened? Come on, try to set up. You already know. You already know. But um, yeah, that's that was it. Like, honestly, I'm glad a lot of things happened the way they did because 
some of that paint on there is still fresh. Like I got this done like maybe like three days ago. So, you know, maybe, yeah, a little, I mean a little more, but like, yeah, it was, it, it's still a little fresh, but um, yeah, I'm glad that everything pulled through the way that it did. And hopefully, you know, y'all can look forward to that third piece that never was, but will be in the future. So yeah, look, look out for that. Yeah. And, it, and that's, that's the thing, that's what's, that's what's dope about the artist experience, being able to kind of see your work come to fruition. Sometimes it doesn't always, come on, how many art, artists are in here? We already know. Sometimes you have to understand when you get to that point and you're like, I have to pivot. Like, this is just not gonna work out the way that I want it to work. It doesn't, I'm not the failure. You know what I mean? It's just that didn't work out the way it worked out. But man, Paulie, you created some amazing, everybody did. Like, wanna, let's give it up for them. Yeah. Thank you. So, real quick, want to deal with future for you. Do you want to talk about failure? Yeah, we'll All right, he wants to talk about failure, then I want to kind of <laughs> conclude it. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows this is my son. Really? You're bugging. All right, yeah. I'm going to pass it to you, okay? All right. Okay, failures. There's a lot of them. Um, I was really pissed off through this entire process, actually, because you see what happened was <laughs> I, I was pretty much done with the project. Now I had to do one more thing. But then I made the careless mistake of losing my flash drive with all the, the original copies of everything on it. So I lost that, had to restart. And then I wanted to add like digital illustration to my stuff. And then when we got, when I finished and we printed them, it didn't turn out how I wanted it to. Then I had to pivot again, and then, yeah, I had to do this, which it, I'm not mad at it. it. It's not my original idea uh, at all, but, um, but yeah, did. I pivoted, and I adjusted, and I uh, conquered those failures. And, and I think, you did, you did that. And how many, uh, like, videographers or those that are in video production, how many are out there? You ever lose your hard drive or your hard drive crash? It's the worst. Your drive is your best friend. It is, but then it gets full with storage, and you have to pay for extra to extra storage. Google Drive. But one of the things that I've learned throughout the process of being in video productions, oh my God, I had to, I've lost so much work, and I had clients' work. I remember there was a time where. I lost my client's work and I had to do the very difficult job of going to my client and saying, hey, I lost the work. How can, I, how can we fix this? That doesn't feel good to have to do, but being able to have the integrity to go to the person and say, hey, now what can we do? How can we move forward? And thank goodness that I had somebody who was willing to work with me, but I learned from, I learned a valuable lesson like I was trying to teach him to back up your stuff. But you learned a valuable lesson. And now you have that experience under your belt and now you can teach with that. Now you're able to teach, now you're able to be more prepared and be proactive. And that's the beauty of this process. That's the apprenticeship. You know, understanding like, I've been there, it's okay. You have this, let's keep moving forward. You got it, you don't give up, put your head up. Wipe the eyes, cry for a moment, yeah. wipe them, and keep going. I'm not saying you were crying, I'm just saying <laughs> metaphorically. But I, I have a feeling that our time is up, and I don't want to keep, you know, belaboring. Like I said, there's another opportunity where we'll go in depth about mediums, de in depth about like the different processes that everybody went through and the things they had to endure and, and things like that. So definitely join us and keep connected. I really appreciate you all. Once again, thank you to Buffalo Art Studio. Thank you to Creative Rebuild New York. Everything, let's give it up for them. Thank you to you. It is packed in here. And, and y'all. The, the final thing that I want to do, 
is I'm gonna pass it to each artist because I know they have spaces they would love for you to go to and they're gonna share where you can go to find more information about their artistry to commission them. This is, they were able to get paid during this process. They were able to get commissioned. Tallulah worked on the cover of Bonnets and Bantus, that photo, she captured that photo. Yeah, that was dope. Paulie is working on, what's up Greg? Paulie is working on uh, the next single right now, um, Don't Eat Crow, one of the songs that I did. He's working on that. Micus is gonna be doing some work as well, photographing and archiving some work within the gallery. Isaac is always gonna be doing work because I put him to work all the time. Caitlin is going to Washington DC with me and she's going to open when I perform at an, e at an event in DC. So I'm gonna go around and I'm, we're gonna share our, our social media information. Okay. Um, the only social media I have and use is Instagram. So you can find me on Instagram at Tallulah Gordon. My name is spelled on the wall, but if I can spell it T-A-L-L. -L. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. Okay, T-A-L-L-U-L-A-H-G-O-R-D-O-N. That's my Instagram. Um, and if you do want to purchase a print, I'm doing original cyanotypes for this piece. There is a, seat, a sheet that you can sign and circle which image you want. And you can buy a print. And they're handmade. They are She's handmade. doing the cyanotypes. Making the chemicals myself. Wow. Doing the chemical process by herself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, I, got, I had to get my card. I'm sorry. I don't know it off the top of my dome, but um, I mostly do most of my transactions or whatever else um, on my Instagram. Uh, you can catch me at uh, P-A-U-L-I-E underscore D-A underscore artist. Um, and you could, if y'all want to, I don't even know if I want to. Uh, y'all can go to my YouTube too. I got yeah, videos up there. Uh, please. Go to my YouTube, but don't go to my YouTube. All right? It's uh, Pauly the Artist. It's the same Pauly the Artist, at, uh, and then it's a seven at the end. So, and if, yeah, <laughs> you already know. But um, if you want any further information, got my cards up there on the pedestal. Uh, yeah, catch me there. Yo. Oh, um. Oh, it's not. We doing like information, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I post most of my work on Instagram. You can catch me at uh, Who X July. So, who? So. Oh. Yeah, spell it. Hey. Who X July? That's basically what it's, it is. It's, it's, who, it is what it is. Yeah. Who? Like <laughs> no. who is he? W H O X J U L Y. You don't know how to spell July. Yes. yes. Oh, um, right now I'm working on a creative space to do most of my work. Right now it's just my room, but that holds a lot of um, good information. I have stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you hear me? You hear me try to justify? I'm saying it like I'm saying it like I'm supposed to have one. Right. I'm saying it like yeah. Um, you know, we got it. It's just I ain't there right now. I'm, I'm right there. Yeah. Little bro. You're bugging. <laughs> uh, my spot, um, it's on Instagram, uh, at the, the Design Co. And design is spelled weird. And for some reason, I don't even know how to spell it myself. <laughs> but we'll try my, I'll try my best. Hold on. D-Y-Z-Y-N. Yeah, there we go. And then Co is just C-O. Um, I need to <laughs> stop slacking and uh, start posting on there, because I only got one post. I so, I um, didn't have to say it. <laughs> nah, so yeah. That's great. You know what I'm saying? You got it. Yeah. I don't know if you heard her say that, but he's 15, he's 12, just beautiful. Beautiful. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. And uh, I guess Instagram is the place uh, because I'm on Instagram too. Uh, my name is my name. The dot galactic dot grio. Grio is G R I O T. Galactic is galactic. If we can't spell, you know what? I'll do it. The T H E dot G A L A C T I 
See? There you go. See, come on, y'all know how to spell. Uh, dot G R I O T. And at some point, I will actually be posting the pictures that I took over the summer uh, in the city. Also, I lost my hard drive too. No, I lost my footage too. So I feel you. We've all been there. We've all been there. You gotta love this, right? Let's give it up to them again. Let's give it up to them. If you wanna follow me and all that I do, AI the anomaly. If you want to know how to spell it, see me after. <laughs> Get Focus Productions, you can follow that. Um, Focus is spelled F-O-K-U-S-D. We spell things weird. Yeah, we do. Once again, thank you so much. You all did an amazing job. Once again, like I always say, be kind to yourselves. One step at a time, you got this. And when we get to Birchfield Penny on May 21st, you're gonna be even more polished and yeah. killing it. I'm so proud of y'all. Keep doing it. All right, thank you so much. Thanks.